I'm Bob Maher here with Roland Chang going over vintage. He's here with his Martello Shops deck. Uh, you've had some huge successes in vintage in the past, a previous Vintage Champs winner, last year top eight. Mm -hmm. uh, so how do you feel about your chances going into this year? I feel pretty good again. Um, it seems to be like a similar type of feel for the metagame. And um, I mean, I'm definitely well prepared for it again. So I'm hoping that you know I can just cruise through, <laughs> maybe do another undefeated type thing uh, through the Swiss, but we'll see what happens, right? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of competition, and like the metagame is, it has shifted, but it's it's pretty wide open. I think the shops players are the only ones who say it's a similar metagame now that you know Treasure Cruise is down to one, and the, r the whole field right. isn't overrun with Delvers and and Pyromancers, because I, I guess shops players kind of lump those in with some other decks, and I guess for for you the metagame comes out very similar, so. Uh, what have you do to, done to update the deck since last year? Well, quite honestly, it's the same 60 from last year, but the sideboard um, it has updates to it. So um, just to really go over it quickly, it's the batter skulls. There's two of them. Instead of the worm coils that I was uh, running, I do have a, another worm coil, but that's to help with the dredge matchup. We do have um, like the dismembers from last year and also um, a second duplicate. I believe that was in the, the other one. And then um, I also have a pithing needle <coughs> to you know take care of the early bazaar. So <laughs> as you can see, I'm, I think, 12 cards deep in for dredge. So I mean, those cards are going to, there's definitely going to come into a play when I meet up against these bazaar players. So Great. So tell me why some of the one ofs. I mean, I think those of us familiar with shops sure. understand the Trinister, but why Duplicate, Steel Hellkite, and Sundering Titan? So each of those are a part of a toolbox, right? So anytime that we get this guy down, Coldwell the Forge Master, um, you can almost tutor it right into play, and it's so much more impactful when you're like you're knowing what direction the the, the player is going at and you see their line of play, you can kind of anticipate, hey, do I need to blow up their lands to like make them worse under spheres? I use Sundering Titan. Do I see that they're gonna try to expand with a bunch of Mentor or Pyromancer tokens? I'll use um, Steel Hukite. And if they do try to, let's say, show and tell, if I know that they're like gonna run that or um, try to oath something in, I can prepare myself, even in the shops ma matchup, prepare myself with Duplicate. And then copying all those three with uh, Metamorph. Great. Now I notice that there's only seven sphere effects, four thorns and three spheres in your main deck. It, why not the eighth? I mean, a lot of lists I see have eight, mm -hmm. but uh, it seems to be a difference you, you're sticking with since last year. Yeah, so obviously the, you know, the question is really, is, isn't the thorn kind of not really that great, uh, especially with there's mentors and pyromancers kind of run, running around? And it's true that this is a little, a little weak, but what I've noticed with this deck is that it, the flow is interrupted when there's just two of these in play. It's like, it's even worse for me because then if I need to really hard cast a Sarring Titan, at least at nine, I can still try to get it through with like a Tolarian or the, with the help of Vicious uh, Workshops. But um, this also disrupts all of my non, um, non creatures. And this, this is a very heavy creature deck mm -hmm. and it needs to be able to be able to play these lodestones under the protection of, a, of a, a, thorn. a thorn there. And then this offers some protection, but it's not as simple because you have to pay five for your lodestone now. And it's harder to expand and like push your opponent out from um, uh, allowing them to almost like, you know, have one up mm -hmm. just so they can force a will. So I think you're really starting to get into the difference of, kind of Martello shops versus some other shop decks out there. So kind mm -hmm. of tell me how a typical game for your deck will play out. So a typical game, or at least how you're hoping for it yeah. to play out. <laughs> I mean, the so the best one that you could probably ho hope for is like a Mox uh, Workshop plus a Chalice on Zero and a Lodestone. So it's pushing them out, and also they can't do any of the you know artifact acceleration very quickly. So that'll that's a pretty pretty much a dream start. Of course, there is always Workshop Trinisphere, but you run the w risk of uh, getting wasted underneath. Mm -hmm. um, so, I would say uh, what you want to do is like you know get the sphere effect down so that they cannot actually play anything. Um, this is being on the play, mm -hmm. whereas being on the draw, um, this, the optimal hand would be something along the lines of like 
a workshop plus a tangle wire to tap down what all, all, all their acceleration that they just put forward and also um, follow up with the next turn with additional threats locking down their um, their extra moxin or soul ring with uh, uh, the Frexian Revoker and just pushing out from there and landing one of these. But mm -hmm. it's a battle. Every, every single um, every single match that I've had, um, there's you know everybody's ready for this deck. Right? So are there any matchups you're overly happy when you have them, or overly disappointed when you get paired against them? <laughs> Personally, I hate dredge. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one of the the most terrifying matchups for me. I mean, I as you can see with uh, the twelve cards dedicated to it already, it's going to be very difficult um, in this field, and I. I think that's my worst fear is to like you know just see three dredge matchups in a row. I basically get kicked out of champs. I have a pretty long-standing, uh, terrible record of it, <laughs> like going up against that deck. But you know, I, I would be happy to see uh, to go up against the mentor decks. I think I'm prepared for that. Mm -hmm. um, I've tested a ton against it. I think what sometimes this deck lacks is uh, is resilience to deck fade in. So it's covered now with uh, the batter skulls, okay. so that hopefully they can't just equip um, equip the batter skull to one of their own creatures. I mean, usually they're pretty tied down with mana, anyways. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I wish you a lot of luck this year in Vintage Champs. Thanks for Thank sitting you. down with us. I actually find it kind of exciting that you're able to because it's. I don't think this is the same sixty by accident or because you haven't been paying attention to the format. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just, it's exciting that we can have a deck in Vintage that just year over year, I mean, you can, you're able to solve the, the, same, the, the same problems, so. Yeah, it's like a Keeper deck that you make that tiny ch tweaks, but the tweaks are actually now over in the sideboard. And um, I give all the credit to the Farina brothers for coming up with this 60, that's, I mean, it's, it's very, very powerful, and uh, this is, I think, the deck to beat. Great. On behalf of Roland Chang, I'm Bob Maher, and uh, this was Martello Shops.